today I am excited to share with you the brand new M4 iPad Pro. Using the newest generation of Apple Silicon, the M4 generation. Now, you might uh, be wondering, why is the M4 chip so special? Why am I so excited about it? Well, I have some specific and at times broad use cases for the iPad and particularly the iPad Pro, why I went with this model and the M4 chip. I want the ability to, while I'm traveling, on the fly, on a plane, in a hotel, to be able to edit high quality raw footage on the go and also dabble in some 3D rendering and modeling as well as uh, what I primarily was using the iPad for before, digital illustration. All of these things are kind of like a wide tapestry of my use cases for this machine and why I'm excited to see how much I can get out of this M4 chip. It comes just about as close to Apple's full vision of that magic pane of glass. I mean, you hold it, it's so light, it's so thin, like, I think it's just a shade over five millimeters. It's absurdly thin, it's absurdly light. A little bit worried, actually. It's kind of fragile, I don't want to break the thing, so I'm being very delicate with it until I get a case. This is really the first iPad that I think can handle the full breadth of a workload that while I may not necessarily need to throw at it, I'm really curious if I can. Now, I won't have all of the apps and tools to show you guys in this video since uh, some of them are still forthcoming, uh, like when it comes to 3D modeling and rendering. There's uh, gonna be some time before uh, Maxon releases ZBrush for the iPad. I applied to the beta, so if I get accepted, uh, then I'll most definitely share with you guys my experience using ZBrush on the iPad. We will take a look at uh, Resolve and I want to see uh, you know just how far I can push the iPad Pro with uh, the high quality raw footage that I have on hand. And we might get into digital illustration as well, see how that has improved with the new Apple Pencil Pro which has a fun little squeeze gesture and the ability to uh, rotate the tip to get different kinds of brushes. But over time, as I try out new features and I'll share that with you guys and let you know if it's, you know, a, a worthwhile investment because it is an investment. Uh, you know, for some people, this is like as expensive or even slightly more expensive than a laptop, which uh, is going to be more functional in many ways um, than an iPad, unless you know you get the Magic Keyboard. I am also planning to get that, um, so I can talk to you guys about that in a future video. But first, I want to take a look at this new iPad Pro alongside the previous iPad that I had. This model here is the 2018 model. I've had it for about five or six years, I think. This was the model that was, I believe, the last one before Apple started putting their M-series chips into the iPads. They're really basically the same size. The new iPad Pro does have a slightly larger screen by like 0.1 inches. So it's a dedicated 13 inch model versus 12.9 inch model on the older one. But yeah, I haven't upgraded in like five or six years. So I was definitely due for an upgrade. And this iPad Pro, while it has been a great tablet, I've loved working with it over these past years. There's not a lot of really intensive work that I can do on it. I can't edit videos on it really. Um, and certainly uh, if I do, they have to be lower quality, like proxy files, nothing 
above 4K. So mainly it was just used for digital illustration and painting. So I will say though, if we put up the screen brightness on both of these machines, all right, this one's, this is the uh, old 2018 model. This is the brand new model. And I will say it's subtle. It's not overwhelming, even though this is a fancy, you know, newfangled tandem OLED screen here. Uh, this one is just a run of the mill old LCD screen. It's still a great screen. The old models still have great screens, but there is like a glow almost like an extra just bit of a, a warmth coming from the new model. It's subtle, but it's there. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to watching movies on it and seeing just how rich, uh, you know, and deep, dark the blacks can be and how bright and intense the colors can be and how HDR content looks. Yeah, so it's not anything mind blowing in terms of the brightness of the screen, but the quality is really something else. Like it just feels so great in the hands. It, it like looks like just a beautiful glowing piece of glass. Okay, so let's take a look at DaVinci Resolve and see if uh, it can handle uh, some Blackmagic raw footage. I've got 6K Blackmagic RAW footage from the Zcam F6 that we're gonna take a look at. I think I've got some red RAW footage from the Komodo as well, um, though I'm not sure if um, the version that I have of Resolve on the iPad can open red RAW footage. But uh, yeah, let's uh, take a look. Take a look on this hard drive. We got some Blackmagic RAW footage of my cats. Let's just select all those, open them. Yeah, we are getting real-time playback. Let me switch over to camera originals here. Okay, okay. Yeah, we are playing back camera original files. Blackmagic RAW, I think this was not like uh, the lowest compression format, like 12 to one. I think this was maybe five to one or, or eight to one compression. So one of like the medium compression formats and it is having no trouble playing back whatsoever. Guys, this is kind of wild. This is 6K open gate, 24 frames per second, Blackmagic raw footage. Let's check out another file here. Let's go full screen here. Just gonna scrub through, no problem at all. Yeah, this is playing back just amazingly. Uh, I don't usually use the edit page, and to be honest with you guys, I haven't used the iPad version of Resolve that much. So uh, just bear with me as I kind of try to figure out the controls of the edit page, which I never use. That's the one thing about uh, the iPad version of Resolve is that you don't get all of the like pages of the full version, uh, like the desktop version of Resolve, uh, just out of the gate. Okay, so, okay, we can stack, we can snap. Check out the neighbor's dog, he's such a cutie. He's a, he's a big old fluffy guy. Yep, we're just we're cutting between these. Throw in a little transition. How about a little noise dissolve? Ooh, yeah. Look at that. No problem whatsoever with that noise dissolve transition. Let's take a look over in the color page now where we have the full raw settings. We can tweak those just like we can in the full desktop version. Okay, and I can choose full resolution there, 6K decode quality. Switch it out to the clip and I'll go with a, uh, we'll do a little quick color transform grade here. 
Okay, so we'll turn on highlight recovery and I will add another node here. Let's bring up our effects panel. We're gonna do a color space transform. Probably check uh, my timeline settings here too with color management. All right, so we are in DaVinci YR GB. Do like to put up my output color space to gamma 2.6, just to get a little bit extra, you know, pop out of that footage. And I mean, these are HDR screens, so you can, you can use higher gamma settings. It's gonna uh, be able to interpret that no problem. All right, so we're converting from, our input color space is DaVinci Wide Gamut, and DaVinci Intermediate Gamma. And there we go, we've got a nice contrasty image outputting to a Rec. 709 format. We converted it from the kind of Blackmagic Raw, Blackmagic Design color space, I think is the default, to DaVinci Wide Gamut and Intermediate, and then convert that to Rec. 709. And that is playing back just fine. We'll go back over to our edit page here. Yeah, that's looking good guys. That is looking good. I gotta say, this is the first time that I have been confident that I could edit high quality raw footage on the iPad. And that's awesome. Okay, so we're gonna import some more media. Some footage from the Komodo. Yeah, it looks like it does not want to import red raw footage. Since these days I primarily shoot in Blackmagic Raw, the fact that I could edit 6K Blackmagic Raw on here is just kind of mind blowing. Wow. All right, and we'll take a quick look at Procreate. So I'm gonna choose like some kind of a thick brush here. Let's go with this flat brush. Let's see, I don't know this one. I like the pressure. So when I double tap or squeeze, there's now this nice little vibration, little haptic feedback there. It's, it's kind of satisfying. So I can do a little double tap to switch between the brush tool and the eraser, which of course was possible before, but having that little vibration feedback to let you know that you're switching tools without having to double check look at the tool in the toolbar. I'm not sure if it uh, has all of the rotation properties. So it seems like Procreate has not added all of the features uh, yet to this version that I'm using uh, in terms of like the ability to roll brushes. There are some other uh, drawing apps that I use like Photoshop and Fresco, which I'll test out later. But I think probably there's, you know, going to have to be some updates to some of these apps. This device just came out, so I was not uh, expecting all of the new features with the new Apple Pencil to work right out of the gate. So I'll update you guys in the future. Uh, let me know if you want me to make some future videos that are more dedicated to the uh, digital illustration, drawing, painting capabilities of this iPad and the new Apple Pencil. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me here. I'll come back to you with some more information as I put the M4 iPad Pro through its paces, but my initial first reaction is, wow, awesome. So smooth, so clean and effortless. Uh, yeah, I am gonna be bringing this guy with me on all of my travels. And if I can use that tool on the go, if I can keep my creativity flowing, and regardless of what situation I am, I can still 
work on a project, work on an edit or an illustration or even a quick you know, model sculpt or render. That's the dream, right? Just wherever I go, whenever an idea comes to mind, I can grab my magic pane of glass and start creating right then and there. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I will be doing some more iPad Pro content in the future, so stick around, stay tuned, and subscribe to the channel so you'll be able to catch that content the moment it's released. All right, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.